So a little over a year ago, I did a video on the Insta360 GO 2, which is basically a tiny action camera the size of your thumb. I absolutely loved it, mainly because it allows you to get some really cool and unique shots that regular action cameras just can't. But it also came with some serious limitations, which I will address later in the video. I think the guys over at Insta360 were aware of those limitations, listened to their users, and went back to the drawing board. And at the end of that process, they turned this into this. Let's ramble. Hold up. Place go up when I pull up. They all on me like a once. Hey, what's up, guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So yeah, like I said in the intro, I really enjoyed last year's model, the Insta360 GO 2, because of all of the cool shots it would allow me to get. Because of its tiny size and the fact that it's magnetic, you can basically stick it anywhere you want, and it will film whatever's in front of it. I took it to the gym, which resulted in some interesting perspectives. I really loved using it for my scooter and e-bike reviews. I mean, you can't really get shots like this with a regular action camera. You can drop it in water since it's waterproof, and I stuck it to an airplane window to create this really awesome hyperlapse. But even boarding the plane becomes a more filmable experience, if that's a word, since the magnetic pendant it comes with lets you snap it onto your chest to get that hands-free first-person experience. That is very unique, and it's what made the Insta360 GO 2 so interesting to me. But, and this is a major but, I was not able to take this with me as my one and only action camera because for that, it had too many drawbacks. It is great at what it does, which is getting into tiny spaces and helping you get unusual shots, but it's not suited to be an actual full-blown action camera. The main drawback, I would say, is the record limit. The Insta360 GO 2 is meant to shoot in short bursts. It's not made to record long sessions. Another drawback for me was the fact that it doesn't come with a dedicated screen. So if you wanna see what you're actually filming, the only way to do that is to connect it to your iPhone. And that process can be a little tedious at times. And we all know what it's like. Action shots happen right now. They don't wait for you to get your camera ready. So for that reason, any kind of friction that can be eliminated, anything that stands between you and your shot that can be taken out of the equation is a win. And that is why this got me pretty excited. A few weeks ago, Insta360 reached out to me again since it had been a year since I reviewed their Go 2 to see if I wanted to try out this new Go 3 and share my findings with you. Now, before I do that, I just wanna make very clear that I'm in no obligation to say anything. This is my review, these are my words, and I will absolutely address some of the negatives in this video as well. With that said, let's get to it. I'll show you what's in the box this time, which accessories come with it, and how they compare to the previous package. And of course, I was able to put this camera to the test in some interesting scenarios involving Paris, a drone, the gym, and Ikea. The previous one, the Go 2, came with this little charging pod, which also doubles as a mini tripod and a remote control. It had the magnetic pendant, and it came with a bunch of mounting options, like the hat mount and my favorite, the sticky mount, that lets you attach the camera to literally any surface and adjust the camera however you see fit. The new Go 3 comes with a whole new range of accessories. In the box, of course, we have the camera itself, which looks very similar to the previous one, and it's attached to the box magnetically, like it wants to say, hey, look what I can do. Behind the magnetic flap, we find a charging slash data cable, of course, some documentation. There's this new slanted part here, and I will explain why that matters. We have the hat clip, which is pretty self-explanatory, and we have our magnetic pendant. Now, the pendant is what you put underneath your shirt like this, and then you snap on the camera like that, and that allows you to get those hands-free POV shots. This slanted part is new, and I'm genuinely happy it's here because depending on the shape of your chest, the camera might be slightly off, facing up or down, and this part here would rectify that. I guess you would also put this underneath your clothes, but you get the idea. Another improvement is that the new pendant comes with this rubberized sort of cover that lets you neatly tuck away the lanyard. The old one didn't have that, so you would basically have to try and roll it around the pendant somehow which was not ideal. Then we have the all new sticky mount and a quick release system. Now this one requires a bit of extra attention because I didn't realize at first that it actually attaches to both the case, but also the actual camera itself. I thought it was just there for the action pod and you will hear me say something along those lines to my daughter later on in the video. I left that part in on purpose to show you why I got confused so you don't have to. And lastly, in the box, we have, of course, the actual action pod, which is probably the most important new feat 
of this new edition, the Insta360 GO 3. This is what turns this camera into a true standalone device that you can use without your phone, without anything other than the camera and this pod. The way it works is super straightforward. You got your little thumb-sized camera that is the star of the show, of course, and it fits pretty much anywhere. But as soon as you snap it into the action pod, you basically get a full-blown action camera inside a form factor we're all very used to by now. Not only does the action pod offer a nice and bright screen, which gives you access to all the camera's options and settings, again, without the need for a phone, it also has a flip screen, which suddenly makes this camera suitable for vlogging. And since this is an action camera, which can go from crazy wide to linear and very narrow shots, this is actually a legit great vlogging option now. Even more so because the mics on this thing are actually surprisingly capable, which you will see in the little Paris segment later on in the video. Oh, and of course the pod charges your camera too. So you get plenty of shooting time out of this thing. You see the GoTo had this charging pod as well, which was pretty innovative. Actually, it doubled as a remote and it had this little LCD screen for essential info and it served as a little tripod as well. Just not a very sturdy one because a fart could literally tip it over. Not so with this new version with a quick release system that literally lets you attach it to any tripod. Now, before we dive into the menu and the settings, let's see this thing in action. So guys, today is a pretty exciting day. I got invited to Paris by a brand uh, for um, a launch of their new product. It's the first time for me that I've ever been invited to something like that. So I'm actually super excited to go and see what that is all about. I am actually using um, an external microphone for now because I don't know yet how good the sound's gonna be on this thing. But if it turns out that the audio from that thing is actually good enough, I won't use this, but we'll see. Anyway, we're off to Paris. It is a three hour and 44 minute trip, which is not too bad, but of course it's gonna be a bit longer because I'm a 41 year old man. I've got a lot of monster energy drinks and I think you can do the math. It means I have to pee a lot. All right, so this is where they put us up. I'm using the ultra wide or the ultra setting. Uh, it makes me look small, but it makes the real estate look big. And that's what it's about right now. So let's have a look. Bathroom with all these, you know, little French accents here. That's your boy right there. Nice spacious room. Coffee machine, very, very important. A little desk, which is also great. I can do some editing tomorrow morning. And of course, the chandelier. You can't go to Paris and not have a chandelier, right? We have a little ceiling thing going on here. Uh, we are right next to the Palace of Versailles, so maybe that's why. And another mirror, because why not, right? Oh, and let me just go to back to the mirror here so you can see what this thing looks like. So it's really... It's really just, it like it's like an action camera on a selfie stick, but you also have this little Go 3 in there. I mean, I still have to check out the images, but I'm really liking what I'm seeing because this is basically just a hybrid camera. You have your little miniature camera that you can stick anywhere, but it also functions as a, uh, as a proper action camera inside a charging case, no less. So on this Paris trip, I didn't need any other camera than the Insta360 GO 3. The only reason I used my phone to film was to get some shots of the actual camera for you guys, but I could have easily filmed everything on the GO 3. I did bring my mirrorless camera, but it didn't leave my bag once. This is so much easier to carry around, especially on an event like that. And I was actually pleasantly surprised about how well it did in low light conditions. I mean, it's still an action camera with a relatively small sensor, but for what it is, it did really well in my opinion. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. 
Now, the gym is another one of those places where bringing a big camera is really awkward. It's already a little bit of a gray area to be filming in the gym. You don't wanna make people feel uncomfortable. And I don't know about you, but I feel like a bit of a tool filming myself in there. But this thing is so small and inconspicuous that most people don't even notice. And the one guy that actually did see me play with it came over because he was genuinely interested in what I was using to film my progress. The cool thing about the Go 3 is of course that you can also get some wacky shots with it too by sticking it to the equipment. Later that day, I had to go to Ikea to pick up a few things for the home office I'm building and decided to have some fun with the camera as well. Now, my seven-year-old has been showing an interest in YouTube for a while now, but I've been hesitant to put her in frame too much, but she's almost eight now and she really wanted to be in the video with me, so I decided to invite her to be my little assistant for the drone shots I had in mind for this camera. Of course, a drone already has a camera on it, I know, but having a second camera on a single drone is pretty dope. Anyway, we wanted to see how well it would hold. So here you go. So you know what we're gonna do, right? Yeah. So this is the new Insta360. I showed you mm -hmm. this, didn't I? Yeah. It's a very little camera and I wanna stick it to the drone, to the bottom of the drone so we can film it lifting off and actually hovering over the ground. Mm-hmm. And the problem is <clears throat> the, the second yeah. version of this, the previous one, came with a sticky mount that was this size, approximately. Yeah. So I could easily stick it to whatever. But this one comes with a different sticky mount. It's this one. You see? Mm -hmm. And the problem is with this one is that it screws onto the bottom of this, which means that entire thing would go on the drone. It's way too heavy. It's a very small mm -hmm. drone. It would not be able to carry it. So what we're gonna do is really primitive. We're gonna just take this, and then we're gonna take a little double-sided tape and then we're gonna stick this thing to the bottom of the drone and then we're gonna pray well, That's a weird plan though <laughs> You know why we're gonna pray? Why? Because we don't want this to fall off <laughs> <laughs> On the screen you can see this one, you see? Yeah Camera, is it working? Yes So we're gonna keep that here so we can monitor And maybe also to, you to find it if it falls off Oh, 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 I got How do you think it went? I thought it was crazy. Crazy? Yeah, I thought, I thought it was crazy because it was going so high that I, could, that I couldn't even fi find it anymore. Yeah? <laughs> on, the, on the screen. I was holding the phone and then I couldn't even find the drone anymore. What else <laughs> do you think we can do with that little camera? Uh, I 
think we would able we would be able to stick it on a bird. On a bird? <laughs> <laughs> Poor bird. <laughs> I'm joking. Elisa? Yeah. Do you think that video deserves a bombastic side eye? Yep. Can you give me one? Bombastic side eye. <laughs> now just to reiterate what I said earlier in the video, the sticky mount actually does attach to the camera directly without the action pod. So that was 100% down to user error on my part. Anyway, I left that part in because it might be useful information. Having said that, I'm not sure if I would have used the sticky mount in this particular case, as the sticky tape solution was probably a bit more drone friendly. It's a light drone and I don't wanna knock it out of its course. So I think maybe the sticky mount would have been too heavy. I don't know, the sticky tape worked. So guys, a very quick look at the menu system here, which again is really straightforward. You got your media library, swipe down for all the settings like stabilization, voice control, wind reduction, you can use a grid, and here we have the standard settings. Swipe left to switch between auto and manual, and up to change your camera settings. I mean, I could dedicate an entire video going through every single setting, but I'm sure other channels will cover that for you. Along with a million other ways to use this camera, by the way, like sticking it to your dog. I've seen people sticking it inside their mouth, literally filming from behind the teeth. If you can think of it, somebody did it. I just wanted to share my actual user experience with you, show you how I actually use it in my daily life, and give you my thoughts on how it compares to the previous version. So how does it compare to the previous one? Well, I think it's safe to say that some major improvements have been made. The battery life is really, really great. The long record limit changes the way I use the camera entirely. And the inclusion of the action pod with the fantastic flip screen and remote control functionality really seals the deal for me and makes this the one action camera if I would only be allowed to bring one. Is it perfect? No, there are of course some trade-offs. This package is a lot bigger than the previous one, which was literally the size of a pair of AirPods that easily slide even into your skinny jeans. This one, not so much. I would definitely recommend bringing a little bag with you, unless of course you wear big cargo pants, in which case you might be able to pull it off. I do like the new sticky mount and the quick release system is really awesome, especially if you use tripods. But I have to admit, I miss the little tiny foldable sticky mount that came with the previous version. And no, it won't fit the new camera because the camera body seems to be just slightly bigger than the previous one. So Insta360, if you wanna make a small foldable sticky mount like this one, for that camera, sign me up. With that said, I think the Insta360 GO 3 is one of the most versatile cameras you can find. It will be the one I stick into my daily carry, and I feel confident recommending this one to anyone looking for a great combination of versatility, usability, and convenience. As always, links to everything down in the description below. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.